And I'm just believing that as you guys come alongside, as we pool together and as we sow into the nations, that God is going to pour out a mighty harvest here. In fact, it's already begun. The harvest has already begun in Quebec. And God is moving. And let me tell you, I was praying. I was like, God, what do you want to say to your church? Because destiny is his church. Amen. I mean, God, God is, he, he's so, he's so, so excited for what he has for you. As I was praying, the Lord spoke to me about a reformation, a reformation, a reformatting and a reformation that he's going to do among you. And, and, and I encourage you to position and posture your hearts to be ready because a shift is at hand. There's a shift that's coming. And it's a shift that will look different. I'm telling you now, and I don't have information, okay? But I'm telling you, as I was praying for des- I was praying for your church, I was praying for you as a family, and the Lord spoke to me about him reforming so that he can reestablish. Uh, there's, there's, there's an authority in the land. There's a crown that's going to come upon this house, and the Lord's going to speak forth with power and authority, but he needs to reform in order to reestablish. Are you hearing me this morning? Some of you, you've been attending here for years. Let me tell you, God is about to reform this church. And he's about to do it in a way that you may not expect. But guess what? It's time for you to now arise and become who you have been destined to be. And Some of you are like, oh my God, he's scaring me right now. What's going on? I'm telling you, there are deposits by the Spirit of God that have been made inside of you, and He is about to do an accelerated work. There's about to be a building up from the inside so that you can walk as mature sons, mature sons and daughters in the land. Amen? So I encourage you to know, I'm sure, I don't know what your leaders have told you, so I'm just saying God's reforming, to reestablish, and you will do more with less, because even being in the building here, there's been a sewing, there's been the coming and setting up, there's been the there's been the work, there's been the there's been the uh, right, there's been the ongoing work together to make it work. Even during COVID, guys, oh, we see, we've been here, we've been hanging out with you guys, we've been hanging hanging out, doing worship, coming along. You know, Sam was here. We brought part of the community here, all the loud young people. <laughs> you know, but we love you guys. And I've already talked to Pastor Dave about our community coming alongside and just hanging out with you guys. So if that's exciting. God is doing something, okay? But I encourage you to look out for what he's forming. And when something looks different than what you think, don't judge it. And don't say, oh, that's not going to be for me. Because guess what? Then it won't be for you. But, you it, but it is for you because it's your DNA. You're knit into this family. You're a part of this house. There, there's, a, there's, some, there's, there's, there's a piece of Christ in you that's needed for the whole puzzle to be completed. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me or should I just start teaching? <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, God is, God is going to show himself as the great provider. I just felt um, over this gal here in the pink. She's got the nice pink mask and everything. You, yeah. I feel, like, I feel like God, he wants to show up and show off in this season of your life. He wants to be the provider, Jehovah Jireh, the pro- provider. And I saw angels, um, angels of provision coming for you. And I believe that you're in a season where you've stepped out of a place of comfort. You've stepped out of a place of what was perceived to be safety. But out of obedience, you've stepped out and now you're in a new place. Does this make sense, what I'm saying? Yeah, you're in a new place. And so in this new place, God's going to take care of some of the, specifically financially, I saw bills. God's going to take care of some bills for you. He's going to provide for you. Because as you made this shift in obedience, it came with um, consequences. And so the enemy will try and come and tell you, well, now look what you can't do. But God's, God's about to move and say, look what I can do. 
He's about to break every box. As we were singing that song, I felt it in the room that, that some boxes were just exploding. And you're about to see God um, provide and do things exceedingly and abundantly more than you could ever ask or imagine. And God's going to open up, even for your, the place where you live, God's going to open up. Um, I, I saw, like, I don't know what this is, but I saw like an, like an extension, like some kind of like a, you felt like there was a pressure, like time was running out or that you, need, you had some kind of ultimatum. Talk to me. Does this make sense, what I'm saying about the living space? Yeah. This is what I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to describe to you what I'm seeing. All right, we're seeing, this is God flowing, we're processing as a family, is it okay? Okay, yeah, God is going to provide a way for you to extend your time where you need to be. And then when the transition happens, it'll be better than you could ever imagine. So I know that that makes sense to you. I don't know you, we've never met, yeah? Okay, yeah. So can we extend our hands to our sister here and just pray? And just, Holy Spirit, I thank you right now that your eyes are upon her, that she is not alone. Yeah, you're not alone, but that you're loved. And you have the support, you have family, even spiritual family that loves you. Yeah, Father, I thank you for providing for every single need according to your riches in glory. Father, I thank you for opening up doors that no man will be able to close. Father, I, I speak favor right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I saw like applications going forth. I declare that favor is upon those applications now, and I dispatch angels now to those um, documents in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for everything, everything, every part of the document where the the T's need to be crossed, the I's need to be dotted, and it put to the top of the pile. Lord, I decree it now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that the new season opens up, Lord, for her with open arms. And God, I thank you that you are going to take care of those finances, God. Oh, in Jesus' mighty name, every, every need, God, I thank you that you'll provide in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name right now. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. And God, I pray, Lord God, that, that things would manifest even today, even this day, that she would know that this is a word from you. That she would know, God, beyond a shadow of a doubt, Father, I thank you for confirmation and signs that follow in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Yeah, come on. So good. I saw applications for different things. I don't know what it is, but I saw um, even uh, um, like time, like they had to be put in within a certain amount of time. And, and I saw God like expedite all of that paperwork. So again, I don't know what it is, but I just declare that it's being done, okay? Yeah, yeah. Even if it's relocation, anything, he can do it all, okay? We've seen it time and time again, so... Is that okay? Can we have some fun this morning? When, when there's a need, like God sees you guys. And, and you know, I, I love you, but some of you, you're going to start to become the answer. And, and it's okay for, for me to come in and, and for me to share part of a gift that I have with you, but all of you have a gift and all of you have the most precious gift of, of Jesus Christ inside of you. And I'm telling you, it's a season where God is, some of you, it's like you've been feeling it okay, you know, there's a little nudge, there's a little nudge. Some of you, it, you know, it might be you're uncomfortable and that'll be the, for, the catalyst for you to shift. And uh, I don't want to be hard on you, I want to edify you this morning, is that okay? All right, but I, I will tell you the truth, I promise. If you have your Bible, let's go to Psalm 127, because this is part of God reforming you. Amen? And you need to talk back to me, guys, okay? Because if, if you get bored, I get bored. I was just telling you how it is. I've already preached this morning. This is double duty. So, so it's one of two things. It's either you're going to get both barrels or you're going to get the little pellet gun, so depending on the response. No, I'm teasing you guys. Come on. Amen? 
All right, come on, somebody. I want to talk to you this afternoon about Christ. And you know that Christ is the great builder. You know he is, huh? The great builder. Two people say yes. I'm going to pick on y'all until you talk back to me, let me tell you. I, I have not preached here in it. I've never preached in this building. I preached years ago. Some of you know me when I was like 14 years old. Carlos over here knows me since I was 14. If you don't, you don't know who Carlos is, is that's Joe. It's a nickname. Yeah. But let me tell you, let me tell you, we're going to have some fun. Amen? All right. Psalm 127. Let's go. 127 verses 1 and 2. All right? Here we go. Don't lose the energy. I mean it. I'll pick on y'all. I'm telling you. All right, verse 1. Unless the Lord builds the house, the Lord builds the house. Come on. The laborers labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It's vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for he gives his beloved sleep. Amen? So if you're not going to let God build what he wants to build, everything that you do is for naught. Everything. Are you hearing me? All the worry, all the toil, all the strife for nothing. So, uh, you know, uh, I liken it to, to like this. There's a lot of us that are happy to hide behind a facade. You know, in Montreal, we like to preserve buildings, so we keep the front, and we put beams up, so we have the facade, you know? And so people look, and they're like, oh, that's, that's a really nice old building. They come in, and then, whoa, it's all, like, new inside. Well, we like the facade. We like the look. We're in a season right now, I believe it's the most prophetic season that we could ever possibly have experienced in our lifetime, this COVID season. Everything is about your perspective. And I'm declaring this morning that even if the eyes have been closed and you've been staying in a place of, of limitation, that God's busting the boxes this morning, that he's giving you vision and eyes to see that this whole season was brought to you as a, as a teacher. You've been taught during this time. And if you don't believe me, just look in the mirror the next time you have a mask on. I'm telling you, because uh, there's something happens when we look. There's some kind of a evaluation. There's some kind of a, of of a um, what's that word I'm looking for? I'm looking for a word. Anyways, it'll come to me. There's an inventory that you take, a personal inventory that you take when you look in front of a mirror. Even if it's like very little. Even if you don't like yourself very much, there's still a personal inventory that you take. But the next time that you stand in front of a mirror and you have a mask on your face, ask yourself, God, is this how I am every day? Am I, being, am I really being who you've intended me to be? Or do I just have a mask on of who I think I should be? Oh, come on, I'm preaching now. Come on. You know, am, am I being real with myself? And am I being real with other people or am I just presenting a facade for them to look at and hope that they never walk through the door and look at what's inside? You know, before renovation happens, you have a very beautiful exterior. When God builds a house, he doesn't, he doesn't concern himself with the look of the outside right away. If you don't believe me, look at the child prodigy, Samuel. I'm supposed to stand like right here, right? That's like never going to happen. Just so you guys know, I love you online, but I move. So, <laughs> just, anyways, Samuel was given by his mother, Hannah, to live in the temple because she offered him as a sacrifice. Are you going to try and fix the cameras? That's awesome. She offered, <laughs> she offered him as a sacrifice. And after many years where there was no revelation, the Bible said people were not hearing from God, all of a sudden, Samuel. And he hears the voice of God, yeah? He's a child prodigy. And when it came time to anoint the next king, after Saul had, had disobeyed God, 
had presumed upon his position and tried to be too casual with the presence of God. It was time for another king. And Samuel was sent to anoint the next king, and, and, and he goes to the house of Jesse, and all these tall, dark, and handsome guys line up. And he stands in front of the first one, and he's like, surely this is the Lord's anointed. And God's like, no. He's like, what? Okay, next one. Surely this is the Lord's. Nope. Surely, nope. This, no. And God speaks to Samuel. He says, Samuel, the man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So when God builds, he builds from the inside out. He's interested in renewing you. He's interested in you not praying for revival, but being revival. He's interested in you embracing the process that he's begun. And as you, as you let go and you allow him into that space, let me explain to you. It's like when you say yes to Jesus, you're like, I don't want to be the God of my own life anymore. I surrender to you. And, and boom, all of a sudden you acknowledge Jesus. He becomes your God. Things start shifting in your life. That doesn't mean your whole body your whole life and every specific place is occupied by him. It means you allowed him access. And it means that, that you've now acknowledged that he's going to be the one in charge from this day forth. The problem is, come on. <laughs> I, can we go there this morning? Jesus said this. And we watch too much Home and Garden TV, guys, okay? Jesus said, in my Father's house, come on, are you with me? In my Father's house, there are many rooms. Yeah? Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And so we start thinking, granite tabletops, thank you, Jesus. Gold toilets like Madonna, thank you, Jesus. I'm just teasing. Don't be offended. Yes. But this is what we think. The place that he went to prepare was himself. Are you hearing me? Many rooms in him. And I don't have to unpack everything because you guys are mature. We're in him and he's in us, yeah? In him are many rooms. But we may have only given him one room. One room where the light's on. And he wants to have all access. He wants to renovate. There's so many houses that you go up and you're like, oh, it's really nice on the outside. You pass through the door, you're like, whoa, what's that smell? And the floorboards are all rotten, you know, the gyp rocks all like messed up. There's leaking water through the ceiling. Everything looks good on the outside, but on the inside, nasty. Are you hearing me? God wants to do a work of renovation from the inside out. He wants to rework something. He wants to, to gut some stuff. He wants to, like, set up shop in your life. Some of you, there have been rooms that have been off limits for years, and God's like, how much do you love me? Are you hearing me? I'm telling you the truth. It'll be good. Yes, come on. How do we get there? Let's go. John chapter 15. You guys know this. Can I show you some different stuff this morning? Some of you are like, I'd like to see you try. I love you, though. Thank you, Lord. John 15, verse 4. <laughs> I told you, I'll be honest. I, lo I, I love this church. Every time we worship here, it's like, uh, it's like a party with balloons. <laughs> it's true. Every single time, everyone's excited to worship. It's my favorite. I love that. Chelsea, Chelsea and I haven't even sang for months together. It's beautiful. But I want to show you something here in John chapter 15. Y'all know where I'm going here. John 15 verse 4, okay? And we see this one word over and over and over again. So let's pay attention. It says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. 
So how difficult is it to be a branch? Right? So long as you stay connected to the source, should be pretty good. But being connected to the source is a humongous challenge. Right? This word abide, I was like, God, this word is here a lot. You know, you ever see a scripture, you're like, this word is like, something's going on with this word. You know what this word abide means? It means to remain. It, remain, it means to stay. It means to rest and give yourself wholly over to a state of being. Consciously, you're giving yourself over to a state of rest. To a state of just being. You're not interfering. You're surrendering wholly to this thing. This, this thing called abiding. Amen? Come on. Let me tell you. Uh, this is not as easy as it seems, guys. It's not an easy process. Because we have consistently feasted on some of the wrong things. And, and usually the way I share it is like this. So we feast on what we can reach out and touch, what we can see, what we can taste, what we can smell, what we can feel, right? What we can hear. The things in the sensory realm. This, is, this, this guy, we'll call it this guy, this guy is called the flesh. This guy feasts on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's a tree of evaluation and judgment. It's a tree of polarity. It's a tree of, of what I can control. And we live out of, we're, we're used to living out of that place. Now, life in the spirit is completely different. Life in the spirit is a constant diet of the tree of life. Who is? Jesus. We just saw it right here. John 15. Jesus is the tree of life. As we feast upon him, the fruit of the spirit starts to be produced in our lives. Amen? Oh, and we start to, we start to go around not having to judge everything that we see. Now we see the difficulty. Because every single day, we're bombarded by this guy. We're bombarded, and people are trying to put you in situations where you have to have your own opinion. People are trying to put you in a certain camp and say, well, are you this or are you that? People are trying to classify you. People lie to you and tell you that you have to have an opinion. You don't got to have no opinion. Jesus said, I only do what I see my father doing. And I only say what he tells me to say. But we get caught up in a diet from this guy. Because this guy's very hungry. And, and if you read in Rome, I believe Romans 5, between 5 and 7, you read all that and you'll see that this guy is at battle against the spirit all the time. And so abiding is much more difficult than we think. And we think, oh, we just got to rest in God. Hey, you go ahead and do that nonchalantly. It's not going to happen. It, there's conscious, conscious, intentional movement towards staying in that state. Amen? Come on, can I share some keys with you guys? All right, let's go. Hebrews chapter 3. I like Hebrews because I'm a coffee addict. <laughs> All right. Some of you got that. Yeah. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 3. Let's go verse... Uh, one. Ready? One person's ready. Who's ready? More people are ready. Praise God. Hebrews 3 verse 1. Therefore, 
Holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Jesus Christ. It's a whole lot of fancy words to be like, watch Jesus, look at Jesus and consider him, all right? Verse 2, who was faithful to him who appointed him? Who appointed Jesus? Father, okay, we're, in, we're on the same page. Moses also was faithful in all his house, okay? For this one, Jesus, has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, insomuch as he who built the house has more honor than the house, okay? So there's a contrast here between the old covenant, everything that Moses represented, uh, um, you know, the law, um, this, this kind of like uh, more works mentality, uh, this kind of veiled uh, lifestyle, and there's a contrast with Jesus, okay? Verse 4, for every house is built by someone, but he who built all things is God. Come on, somebody. And Moses indeed was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which would be spoken afterwards. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are. Come on. If we hold fast to the confidence and rejoicing of the hope firm until the end. Hold fast to confidence. What does that mean? What does it mean to hold fast to the confidence? It means if we hold on to the language that we're given by the Spirit of God. Do you know that you are given a language by the Spirit of God? That you are, giving, you are given a boldness by the Spirit of God. Anybody that knows me really, really well knows that I grew up not particularly bold. I had a speech impediment when I was young. Until I was like seven, my, my mom's dad taught me how to speak and pronounce properly. I was terrified of playing guitar in front of anybody till I was maybe 17. Maybe even like when I started coming to Destiny. Maybe then I was kind of okay. But other than that, trying to get me to do it in a living room for anybody? No, it wasn't going to happen. I was shy. But under what we would call the anointing, all of a sudden, ah, you know, you're bold as a lion, right? Now, <laughs> Holy Spirit wants to give you his way of speaking. He wants to give you a language of the free where you can have boldness because you need boldness in this life. Amen? You need boldness in this life. Come on, let's go here. First John Chapter 4, and then we're going to flip back to Hebrews 3. So just keep your finger in uh, one of those places there. Come on. First John chapter 4. Many of us know this. This is the gospel. I love this. First John 4, starting at verse 10. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. What does that mean, propitiation? Payment, ransom, justice was served. Did you know that? That's the purpose of the cross. The purpose of the cross was so that justice would be served, perfect justice would be served. Anything that you've ever done against somebody or anything that anyone else has ever done against you you do not have to go and seek justice. Justice came for you upon the cross. Amen? That's why when Jesus was hanging on the cross, he said, it is finished. That word tetelestai, it was a word that you would use in the marketplace. If you went and you owed anything, you'd go into the marketplace, and, and usually they'd have some kind of a ring of some sort. They'd dip it in wax, and it'd be a seal, and it'd be tetelestai, paid in full. That's what it means. Justice was served. Jesus made a way for you to not have to be entangled. Come on, somebody. In the affairs of this world, you don't have to. Some of you know where I'm going here. You don't have to stand in a place of judgment because he's already executed and rendered a perfect, just 
ruling. This is the thing. If you stand in a place of judgment, you and that other person are now tied together. It's like a soul tie. Some, some, I'm just being honest, and I love you. Can I be honest with you this morning? Some of you, because you've held on to judgments, you can't truly forgive. Only when we say, God, I withdraw my judgment against this person, can we truly move into a place of forgiveness. And we can truly move into freedom. So long as we're trying to be God, and we may not have even thought of it that way, but if Jesus has brought forth perfect justice, if he has executed a perfect ruling, and we're still judging someone and holding them, or holding them to what they did, then we're also being judged. It says so in Luke 6. That's the verse that everybody uses to take offerings. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Give and it'll be given to you. Press down, shaking together, running over. That's about judgment, people. I love you, but that's what it, I can give you other verses about offering legit, but that's about judgment. In the same measure that you judge, it'll come back. And why would we do that? So maybe, maybe if that's resonating, maybe I irked somebody this morning. Just say, God, this person, I release them of my judgments towards them. And I'm sorry that I've stood in, in that place of judgment. That's your place. You know, Jesus said this, vengeance is mine, I will repay. Amen? And that's what he did on the cross. And we're getting a full course meal here. Are you guys, you're, you're good with this? That's the gospel. The gospel is justice for you, justice for me, justice for all mankind. Amen? So you can live free and not tied up to somebody else. Forgiveness can flow and you can move out of a season. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit spoke to me last week about a fresh wind that was coming, a wind of change coming to blow away the ruins of an old season. And he spoke to me while Chelsea was doing her ladies' uh, night of revival online. Some of you may not know, Chelsea does these nights of revival with uh, Sammy and Christian Robinson, and Voice of Revival. She leads the ladies' revival. So I was singing that song, Battle Belongs, I did exactly those two songs, the same as this morning. And I was like, God, why am I singing these songs? And he's like, just declare that I'm doing something. I'm moving. I'm, and so, and then Sunday morning, we had a brunch at our place with, with our community. And we were singing. And the wind, it's like the wind of the Spirit was blowing. I was like, God, what are you doing? Well, do you know that last weekend on Saturday night, the super sex on St. Catherine Street, burnt to the ground. Now, it wasn't occupied. No one got injured. And no one's been in there since 2017. However, the ruins of an old season that defined Montreal. Come on. You guys excited? Come on. Uh, we were known as a city for adult entertainment. We were known as a city for exploitation. On the main of, of St. Catherine Street, a big symbol that's been there since the 70s, burnt to the ground because God's changing the demographic. And we need to allow God by His Spirit to blow away the ruins of our old seasons because the season that you're in right now is not the same as the season you were in before. So you can't casually act the same way. You have to change. You have to shift. You have to move with the Spirit of God because He's doing a new thing. Come on. Come on. He's doing a new thing. You don't want to be caught staring at the ruins of an old season. Because the truth of it is this. Those traumas, can I speak truth to you this afternoon? You hold on to these things as memories for safety because it's part of your identity. Are you hearing me? The things that you went to, through sometimes you don't know any other way to talk to somebody else, if not to tell your stories of hurt, pain, betrayal, scars, all this kind of stuff. I still love you. You still love me? I hope so. If you hold on to that stuff, it's like you are erecting the beams for the facade to still be there. You're allowing the ruins to remain when God says, I'm doing a new thing. And I want to blow by my spirit. I want even the bricks are blown away. Everything blown away. Everything made new. 
Do we understand his mercies are new every morning? Every morning I get stuff that I don't deserve. Every morning I get fresh energy. I get fresh empowerment by the Spirit of God. I I am clothed afresh with righteousness. I am brand new every day, and so are you. But if you allow these, these ruins to remain because your, your identity is found in these things that have gone on, your emotions are all wrapped up in the trauma of your past. And God wants to move you into a new day. Come on, I know I'm hitting chords now. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. All right, 1 John 4, 11. Turn to your neighbor and say, this is good for you. Turn to your other neighbor and say, this is good for you. Come on. First John 4, 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. There it is. You got to love me. <laughs> Even if I tell you the truth. Okay. Here we go. But why do we need boldness? Why do we need the language of the Spirit? Why do we need this? Because we are going to face some stuff. Let's look at verse 16. And we have known and believed that the love of God, uh, we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides, there's that word again, in love abides in God and God in him. So if you, if you give yourself wholly over to that state of just being in God, not living according to this guy, this dude, who is like, ah, I'm hungry all the time, ah! you know, we wonder why. We see these movies. If you want to hear from God, I'm just being real honest. Watch a Marvel movie. You ever see Venom? It's a new movie. It's about this thing that wants to control the guy. It's about this. It's this. It's this. It's literally like the flesh. It's this like wild thing. Wah! Wants to control this dude. You want to know who you're called to become in God? Do you want to know? The movie Eternals is coming out. These are people that are sent down to help the humans fight the demons. Is somebody hearing from God and producing movies in the church? God, we need to not scandalize stuff. Because if we scandalize, we'll miss the revelation. Can I be honest with you? We've read this scripture. God reigns upon the just and the unjust. That's why some people have money that shouldn't have money. Ain't wrong. God reigns revelation upon the just and the unjust. He's constantly speaking to the just and the unjust. And the unjust can actually move in that revelation, present it to the world, and the church, sons and daughters, are called to identify it and now take possession of what's been brought forth in this realm. But if we scandalize things, uh, it's like strumming all kinds of chords today, come on. If we scandalize things, then we won't have authority over that which we don't love. Okay, let's keep going. (laughs) Thank you, Lord. Verse 17, love has been perfected among us in this that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. Can Can I shine some light on maybe something you haven't seen before? This is not apocalyptic literature. This is not an apocalyptic passage. This is not talking about the judgment seat of God. It's not talking about the last day. It's talking about a day where you receive a bad report. It's talking about a day of judgment against the goodness of God. It's talking about when you receive, uh, you know, that, that doctor's report of, oh, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you receive some news. You receive a judgment against God. You, you receive a bill. And as soon as you look at that bill, fear comes into you. And you say, oh, my gosh. At that moment, you need a language of the Holy Spirit. At that moment, you need a language of the free. You need a boldness to rise up from the inside of you and believe that God is who he says that he is. And that's the kind of language that he's forming inside of you. That's the kind of boldness that he wants to give to you. The enemy expects you to react. He expects you to freak out. He expects you to live according to this. Well, let me check, let me check my bank account. Oh, my gosh, okay. Whoa, it's, I don't think it's going to work. That's what he wants. Can I drop something crazy on you? Scientists have even proven that up from 0.5 to 1% of what's perceived 
by our nervous system in a sympathetic state is actually real. 0.5 to 1%. So I'm looking at Joe, and because I met Joe a long time ago, I have a crazy memory. I remember his hair. It was just a bit darker before. <laughs> I remember his laugh. I, I remember him. But then that becomes reality. And if someone else tries to show me Joe, and they say, no, this is Joe. No, it's not Joe. I know Joe. Joe's this. It's locked in my grid, locked in my matrix. This is who he is. And no one can tell me otherwise because this is who I, I know him to be. Did you know that 99% of what's actually real is, <laughs> is something that we don't see? It's in the realm of infinite possibility. And, and I mean, if you want to study this more, you can. If, if you're into this stuff, you can look at the atom. You can look at what, what's inside the nucleus and what's the space between, you know, that kind of dark matter or infinite potential is the void. It's a place where God created from. Before there ever was, there was a place where he was, the 99%, the infinite potential. If you saw that tomorrow there was a 99% chance of sun, you'd be excited. Right? But what do we do? We receive a report in the 1% that our, our nervous system puts together and equates to be reality according to this guy. And we put all of our emotions to it and therefore our faith is mixed with it and it manifests and becomes reality and we get stuck into that place when God is calling us to live out of a place of infinite potential. Come on, are you hearing me? Yeah, the gospel is better news. It just gets better and better and better and better and better. People give their lives because they know that there's something better than what they're currently living. People suffer, and as they're suffering, they know that even what they're currently experiencing in their anguish and in their pain, there's something better. Are you hearing me? And you have the privilege of living in a place where you can actually explore what the rest of that potential is. Come on. I, I, we need to be more excited. about. <laughs> on the day of judgment, the day that it comes, the day that, 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 I, that I receive that bill in the mail, the day that I receive you know, that uh, diagnosis, the day that I receive some bad news, I have to have a boldness. I have to have a confidence. I have to see things from the other 99% and lay aside the 1% and say, not today. Today, I'm going to see through the eyes of faith. Today, I'm going to lift up my eyes to where my help comes from. I'm not going to see from this realm. God, give me your eyes to see. Give me your ears to hear. Give me a heart to perceive what your spirit is doing. Come on. Flipping back to Hebrews 3. You're still with me now. Come on, we're getting our cardio in this afternoon. Come on. Woo! Let, actually, let's go to Hebrews 4, because we're speaking of boldness. When we don't have the boldness, I've got good news for you. You've got someone on your side. And that person on your side is far greater than anyone else ever. <laughs> Let's go. Hebrews 4, 14. I'll take a drink while you get there. Hebrews 4, 14. Is this okay? Is this too much or are we good? Okay, we're hungry? Okay. Seeing then that we have a great high priest... Jesus, come on, who is passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. Again, with this word confession, what is confession? To say the same thing that God says about me in my life. I'll say it again. To hold fast to your confession is to say the same thing that God says about you and your life and to not let go. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly, there it is, to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. The day of judgment. The day of the bad report. 
the day when uh, all manner of evil starts to, tries to row, rise up against you, right? We can come and receive mercy. We sang it this morning. Mercies are new every morning. Mercy is what I don't deserve. Grace is not some band-aid we slap over bad behavior. Grace is not license for you to live and do whatever you want to do. Grace is the empowerment by the Spirit of God for you to become like Jesus. Amen? Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Now we'll go to Hebrews 3. Let's go. That was the warm-up. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> Hebrews, we're in it though right now, so you're committed, all right? Uh, we're good. Thank you, Lord. Hebrews 3, verse 7. Let's go. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, turn to your neighbor, say today. Other neighbor, today. Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. In the day of trial, right? In the wilderness, where your fathers tested me and tried me and saw my works for 40 years. They saw the deliverance of their people. They saw, you split the sea so I can walk. They saw that. They saw the pillar of fire. They saw the cloud. They saw the manna. That They had clothes that didn't wear out. They had shoes that didn't get holes in them. They saw the wonders of God. They saw the works of God. And yet, complacency. Are you hearing me? My goodness. Verse 10, therefore I was angry. With that generation, and I said, they always go astray in their heart. And they have not known my ways. That word known, it, it, it's, it's an interesting word because it, it has to do with allowing yourself to know. Allowing yourself to know. They not allow themselves to know my ways. They didn't allow themselves to be aware. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. And we know that story. You know, the ground opened up, <laughs> it swallowed all these people. All of a sudden, they were not there. Whole generation. Earth opens up. They never enter into the promised land. Right? So here's the warning for us. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Okay, what is unbelief? Seeing and still living according to this guy. <laughs> Tasting and seeing that God is good. Yet, I got a better way. I have a better idea. I'm going to hold on to what I know. Uh, what I can touch, what I can taste, what I can hear, what I can feel, what I can see. My perceived reality, that's, that's where I'm going to stay. God calls that unbelief. Come on. But exhort one another daily. That word exhort, I love that word. It's the Greek word parakaleo. It means to draw near to someone and call them to the side and to walk with them. Come on. So on a day of judgment, maybe someone around you doesn't have boldness, but you have boldness by the Holy Spirit. And so you say, hey, come on, come on, come on, come, come, come walk with me. Come alongside me. Come on, come here. You know, let me pray with you. Let me walk with you. Let me process and do life with you. Come on. We need community. And when we're vulnerable, vulnerability is not some kind of a sign of weakness. Vulnerability doesn't make you less spiritual. It makes you more spiritual. Are you hearing me? Not that there's any kind of scale. But vulnerability is saying, God, in my weakness, I allow you to be strong. Or I allow you in Joe or in Sally or in Sophie or in Mike or in, uh, you know, in any of you. I allow you to be strong in them for me. It's, it's walking together in community. But exhorting one another daily while it is called today. So don't wait when you're discouraged. Don't wait for another time. Don't wait for things to get better. Things are not necessarily going to get better if you don't do anything. Faith without works is dead. Okay? I know it's not like a great example here contextually, but I'm trying to tell you that you can have something, and I'll get there, I promise. We'll do the mechanics of that. But you can have something, but just because you have it doesn't mean you can use it. 
And if you don't use it, it may as well not be there. Right? Okay. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Verse 14, for we have become partakers of Christ. Right? We eat of him. If we hold to the beginning to our confidence, steadfast to the end, while it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. And we talked about that, the, the ground swallowing up a whole generation. Uh, let's look, verse uh, 19. So we see they could not enter in because of unbelief. They could not enter in because of unbelief. We can't, we, the line has been drawn in the sand, you guys. We're in a new season. We're in a season right now <laughs> where many people have got caught up in this. This is this this guy that likes the tree likes the tree of polarity, division, separation, evaluation, judgment, and and we see we literally we can't see anything outside of 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 what we perceive to be real. We don't allow ourselves our own opinions. Yeah, I thought you said minions. <laughs> it's kind of like. It's kind of like minions. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> That's what Jesus said to the Pharisees. So you're like minions. You're like your father, the devil. And he spoke to them because all they lived out of was this all the time. All right. You see how I, anyways. Hebrews 4, verse 1. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest... Let us fear, that doesn't sound good. Let us fear, lest any of you seem to have come short of it. That word fear, of course, means awe. Let us be in awe. Let us never lose our wonder. When God has done such amazing things, let us continuously abide and stay in that place of being in awe, being amazed. How great is our God? He's awesome. He's powerful. As long as we focus on that, we can't focus on anything else because he's too good. Come on. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them. I, I want to I'll break down something very quickly. They received the same word. The word has existed from the beginning of time. The word of God comes to you often through the scripture. Okay? But in the beginning was the Word. And we're not speaking of paper and ink. We're speaking of Christ. We're speaking of the revelation, the Lagos. Amen? That revelation came to the children of Israel through the wonders and signs that were done, through the manna that was done, through the miracles that were done. That's the Word coming to them. That's the revelation, the revealing of who God is, the revealing of him as provider, the revealing of him as defender, the revealing of him as the one that sustains them. Come on. You're agreeing with me. So the word came to them, but the word they did not receive, and they did not mix their faith with that word. If you want to look more into that, look at the parable of the sower. And everything that you'll ever need to understand. Jesus said, if you don't understand this, you'll never understand anything else in the kingdom. How the word comes to you. It's very important. The word can come to you through reading the scripture. It often does. But the word can come to you while you're soaking, while you're worshiping. The word of God is, is, that, is like the river that flows from the throne of God. Constantly and continuously. It's like the word washed by the water of the word. Come on, somebody. The word gets sown into the soil of your heart. And, and when that word starts to mature, the word becomes flesh in you. And then when you release the word, it becomes a rhema word. And then the cycle continues. I share the gospel with Joe. Rhema is coming out of my mouth, but Lagos is coming into him. As the Lagos comes into him, it starts to grow. The tree starts to grow. He becomes that revelation. And then he speaks to Ivan. And what comes out of his mouth is Rhema. Is that difficult? Do you understand what I'm saying? We all understand cycles, right? Like rain, you know, puddles, evaporation. God has knitted stuff in creation 
that we learn at a very young age that's still a mystery until we can see it in the Word. Butterfly is the same thing. Do you know that a butterfly is a caterpillar, caterpillar is actually dead for a little while before it becomes a butterfly? <laughs> Do you know that if you took the DNA of a butterfly and compared it to the DNA of the same caterpillar that became the butterfly, there would be two separate DNAs? Scientifically? Mysteries in creation for you so that you would one day become who you always have been called to be. Is this good? Come on, we're going to land the plane now. We're landing the plane. Put your seats in an upright position. Please take your AirPods out. Um... <laughs> Come on. Hebrews 4, verse 2. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as them, but the revelation, the logos, the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. So the revelation has to be mixed with faith. Amen? Amen? What is faith? Very simple. Faith is initiated by God, but activated by you. Okay? So faith is given to you by God, but you activate it. Amen? Everyone's been given a certain measure of faith. Maybe somebody got more faith than yours. That's okay. Ask God for faith. How do you do that? Hebrews 4.16. Come boldly before the throne of grace at your time of need, and receive what? Mercy and grace. What's faith? By grace you've been saved through faith. It's a vehicle for you to receive faith. It comes with grace. It's the all-inclusive. Yeah, some of you it's going to unlock a lot quicker. I know it's a lot of information right now, but what I'm telling you, it's a whole package that comes to you. Right? You get Jesus. You get the Word. You're constantly filling yourself with the Word. It's constantly flowing in you, and you're receiving grace at the same time. You're being empowered. You hear me? Come on. All right. We're landing. First Peter 2. I'm a word preacher, if you haven't noticed by now. We're, we're like in the scripture, like hands dirty in the scripture. Come on. First Peter 2. All right. Verse 2. As newborn babies desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, coming to him as a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious, you are also living stones. You're being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices well received to God through Jesus Christ. I say well received because it says acceptable. As soon as you see acceptable, you think that you're not acceptable. If you look at the word in the Greek, it actually will say well received. So you're coming to God as someone that may have been misunderstood. You're coming to God as someone that may have been hurt. You're coming to God as someone that, that might be a victim of someone else's injustice or you were cast aside. Whatever the circumstance was, you felt like you didn't fit, but now you're a living stone and you're being built up into the house of God. And he's chosen you. And he's asking, will you surrender to me? And as you surrender, you become the acceptable sacrifice. Amen? To God. And just... We need, to, we need to start to come out of agreement with the camp of the devil. And we need to stop living according to this guy. And we need to hear what God is saying. Today, if you'll hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Today is the day. Today, today, right now. He's shifting you even right now, today. Jesus wanted you to know in his prayer, he prayed to the Father. In uh, John 17, 23, the last part of 23 says this that they would know that they're loved by you, Father, just as much as I am loved by you. Jesus, when he was praying, he wanted you to know that you were loved. Amen? But there's more. I don't, I don't necessarily have the, have the time, but read John 17. You'll see there's so much more, than, so much more than maybe even 
what you've ever known is there in that prayer. I'll just quote it, and, and you can go read it if you're hungry. Jesus said in the beginning of John 17, he said, Father, give me the same glory that I had before the world was formed. Then you fast forward. You go to verse 20 and onward. It says, and the glory that you gave me, I've given to them. Think about that. Beginning, Father, give me the glory that I had with you before the world was, outside of time and space and limitations. Fast forward. Jesus says, I have given them the glory that you gave me. Same glory. Same love. No limits. If you abide. And so I encourage you guys in this time of reform, I don't know how, if this is late, later than usual, I don't know. But can I pray with you? I hope you were encouraged. I hope you were built up. Uh, it, you know, and, and I want you to understand that, that by the Spirit of God, this information comes to you. The Word comes to you by the Spirit of God. Amen? So it doesn't matter if you didn't catch everything that I said. The Spirit is responsible for bringing the Word to fruition. That's what's so beautiful. No pressure on me, right? Plus, you, you can watch again on the live stream. I'm super dark. I wore, like, the wrong colors. If I go like this, I actually disappear, except for my white hands. <laughs> I literally, there's nothing but me and my white arms and head. My beard and my shirt are blended into the background. Literally, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's look at this. Anyways. <laughs> Come on, we need some joy in the house, you guys. Let me tell you. Come on. Father, I thank you so much for everything that you've done today. Father, I thank you, Lord, that, that when we need a language of the Spirit, you come and you give us boldness. Father, I thank you that every day you are building us into you. Father, I thank you that, that Lord, we are that house that you are building. And right now, today, we surrender. Today, we choose to not harden our hearts. Today, we ask, come sensitize us by your Spirit. Today, we say that we are hungry. Today, we say, grow us up. Today, we say, come and blow by your Spirit the ruins of our old season. Today, we say we are yours. We say that come and do your thing your way. God, establish us. Build us up to be that spiritual house. God, we thank you, Lord, for this church. We thank you, Lord God, that you are reforming to reestablish. Father, I thank you, Lord, for that crown anointing, Lord, upon this house, Lord, to be an apostolic lighthouse, Lord, not just to the greater Montreal area, but to the nations of the world, Lord, and we partner with their faith, and we thank you, Lord, that angels are being dispatched even right now to move in this area. Father, I decree a shift of limitations coming off that have been imposed upon this building, that have been imposed upon this land, that have been imposed upon this ministry. Right now, I dispatch angels to break the back of, of corrupt legislation in Jesus' name. And Father, we declare, Lord, an expansion. We declare a growth. We declare a fulfillment of the dream that's inside of your heart in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that, Lord, you will not allow your people to be put to shame, but, God, you will establish them in this season of reforming. They will go forth as an apostolic lighthouse to the nations in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. There's nothing that you can't do, God. And, Lord, I thank you for the courage for every person to rise up and take their place. Father, I thank you for the courage for every heart to, to rise up. I thank you, Lord, that when they don't have that boldness, they can call somebody that has that boldness. They can walk alongside somebody. I thank you for allowing humility to come. In the sensitization of the heart comes humility. So, Lord, let it be in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said, amen. Come on. Thank you guys so much.